Now, for those of you, and I'll be able to see it on either one of the channels, if you have a question, if you got a comment, if you got, matter of fact, if you have a comment, just put a Q uh, in front of it so that I'll know. And then you can say, hey, Corey, you're wrong. Someone says you're carrying the water for the GOP. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Again, tell me where I'm wrong. Especially the person who made this, uh, the last statement. Tell me, tell me where, I don't know what the person's name is. Tell, tell me, friend, where I'm wrong. Tell me what I've said that was, that was off. Uh, let me cover some of these super chats. By the way, thank you, Mac, for the super chat. Uh, Andrea, I never really comment, but this is one of my, thank you. Thank you. That one of my favorite Christian channels. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you for the kind words. Um, Theo Repent Robinson. Thank you. Thank you so much for the, for the, um, Oh, you got one in the church. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Reg Hand 43, please review the short on Larry Elder's um, read. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. Um, you need to stop. If you have a choice between, you need to stop. If you have a choice between two evils, go with the lesser evil. Trump can't quote a scripture. And he said himself he doesn't pray. Trump grabs women by their private parts. First of all, he says he can, but I'm not defending Trump. I'm not defending Trump. Let me ask you a question. Is Trump advocating abortion? Is Trump advocating for children to, to have their genitals um, exchanged, ripped off? Is he, is he advocating? No. Do I think Trump is a biblical gentleman? No, I do not. Do I think Kamala is or Kamala? No, I do not. Both of them are tools. I wish that people would get this political issue understood. They are tools. You send them to do a job. If they happen to be Christian, amen, praise God. Amen, praise God. But neither of them are. Neither of them are going to go and advance the kingdom. But at least we got one that is trying to get the ear of the Christian body. Is Kamala trying to get the ear of the Christian community? No, she's not. If Is Trump trying to do so? Even if he's unsaved, he's at least trying to get the ear of the, of the Christian community. At least he's going to try to promote it. Now, I don't know if he's going to do it or not. All I know is some of the things that we're talking about, he's not pushing those things. He's not an advocate of these 20, nearly 20 million black babies being aborted. And for you as a Christian, black, white, Hispanic, what have you, that's a huge problem if you overlook those things. Now, I want your Q&As, though, to be about this, though. I want, I want, I want the questions or your comments uh, to be about this. Do I think that all abortion is are, are wrong? Let me say this. Um, there are some times where it's a, it, it, the baby is not viable. I don't mean viable in the sense that eh, it might be a difficult pregnancy. I, I mean that the baby is going to die anyway. The, the baby is about to die. The pregnancy can't be sustained. If it goes longer, the mother's health is at risk. Now, what percentage of pregnancies does that represent? A small number, but let's say if it's ectopic, that's different. That that's different. That that's not really that it's not even really classified in most states as an abortion. But when people talk about rape, murder, and incest, first of all, if you gave them the opportunity, I'm not saying you, but if you gave them the opportunity, say, okay, well, fine. Then would you support a ban on abortion? They still wouldn't. They just want it on demand whenever, because it's typically out of convenience. Those represent less than one half of one percent of all abortions anyway. Oh, by the way, probably even less if you were to actually have someone to report it. You know, so. Even those that, that, that are said to be for rape or incest, um, most of those aren't reported. Now, we don't know if maybe the person's scared. Who knows? So, um, should, shouldn't we as Christ, Christians absolutely vote for Trump in this case and try to at least prevent the liberals from getting in? Let me say this. I think there's a lot of reasons why a person would do this, would vote for Trump. Some of the reasons would not be Christian based, but I'll say this. <clears throat> there, are only a, there are only a couple of biblical reasons why you would not definitely vote against um, Kamala. Issues regarding that particular community and what they're doing to children uh, and abortions, things like that. Uh, but if you all ever ask me about her economic policy, it's literally the worst economic, if you value your house, your cars, your money, if you value that, I would love for someone to tell me why they're, why they should vote for her. That would be the, that, that would be the more interesting question. 
Why would any Christian vote for her? You're right. Trump is not a Christian. So now, I, I, matter of fact, as often as you guys can see in the comments, let folks know that we all agree Trump is not a Christian. OK, so we're not saying we're not doing this under the illusion that, hey, he said he was. Uh, no. But what would be your biblical reason? Because I want to know the folks that, that, that are contemplating voting for him or are going to vote for, uh, for I'm not him, but her. Tell, tell us why. What's, what's your reason why? Trump is not the answer, um, but <laughs> first of all, Huncho, no one is going to change this world. We are we are on this collision court. But I would say let's tread let's let's tread as much water as possible so the boat doesn't sink sink that um, sink as fast as as it's going. So my question is, I would love to know. I would love to know for someone that is against Trump, but for her, why? What is your what is your biggest reason? Your biggest um, point. That didn't make okay. Okay, well, where I just saw stuff on this thing is moving too fast. Um, the brother just said, "I'm for those who live." I just saw it in my, and my, there it is. Um, where'd it go? Where'd it go? I oh, gone. I just saw it. Ah, this thing is moving too fast. Let me if I and I can't stop it. <laughs> um, thank you, Michael Lemay. Thank you so much. Just saw it because I, I, I thought it was a good comment or at least a comment worth. Um, and I'm going to answer that question too, Diana. That, that's a good question too, what she just put up. Uh, I'm doggone it. Where, where, where's my buddy at? I just saw I just saw your comment. <sighs> okay, I know how to find it. I know how to find it. I want to. I I saw the comment and 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 things move quickly, so I want to go back to the comment. Uh, let's type in his name. Okay. I'm like one who who uh, who lives a life bearing the fruit of the spirit. Easy answer. Not so easy though. Not so easy. Make America Christian nationalist. No, we don't want to. I don't. I don't think we ought to be a Christian nationalist country. I don't believe in that either because I know full well what a lot of the Christian nationals uh, point to, and what that is is the right Christian is the one leading and some of them have some some <laughs> bad policies that being the case is it better than what we have sure but i'm not pushing that because what happens when you put someone in office even with the moniker of christian when you give someone power it tends to go to their head that's why we struggle so much with some of these pastors that we have but uh you're like you, i'm like one who lives a life bearing a life bearing the fruit of the spirit. Easy answer. Okay, but what does that have to do with the government? So do we say, nah, you know what? Forget the government. Forget, we don't need to be a party to that. So when you, whatever you do, whatever you do, whether you, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whatever you do, whether you eat, sleep, drink, whether you vote, whatever you do, how should you do it? All to the glory of God. How can you vote to the glory of God? Well, you don't have godly character. I mean, candidates. It's not like Paul is running for president and his competitor is Peter. No, uh, it's more like Ananias and Judas who are running for president. Right. So that's what we have. So what do you do? Well, which one is going to either promote the things that push the interests of, Christ of the Christian community? Or at least, at the very least, like the Hippocratic Oath in, 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 med in, the med in medicine, do no harm. Which one at least is going to do no harm to the church, to the body? I think, I think at least right now, it's pretty obvious. Now, growing up, for the most part, you had folks that, that weren't promoting these things. When, when Bush ran against uh, Ob uh, um, Obama, when Bush ran against Clinton, Neither one of those would you say they are against the Bible. Now, which one had the better policy? Who knows? That, that's, that's for you guys to decide. Were they advocating or pro promoting anything that was really... Neither one of them were even promoting abortion. Now, was Bill kind of uh, iffy on it? Yeah. But the issue was a Supreme Court issue. And so, and then really that, all that really is, is going back to the, to the states. So, uh... 
Let me take some more of these questions. What was the question that Don asked? She says, so are we to ignore our economy? Why can't we get things, uh, why can't we want things to get better, especially for those who are struggling to eat? So many can't afford to live right now. Let me just say this in terms of ec economic policy. We should want the economy to get better. Let me, and, and you guys get upset with me. And if you do, that's fine. Um, you, here's your time to offer a non-biblical crit critique of my critique of her economic policy. Her economic policy is horrible. It is literally the worst that I've ever seen. This um, taxing unrealized gain. Do you all understand what that is? Say, for example, Here's Joey. Joey is the most famous cup in the world. Better, more famous than the Stanley Cup. <laughs> the value of Joey has gone up. So let's say, whereas I bought, I bought Joey in 2007 uh, in the in prison for what did I pay? Five dollars, I think, maybe six, seven dollars for Joey. Joey is clearly worth hundred dollars right now. Unrealized gain is the value of this thing, even though it's just sitting here. So this unrealized gain is now taxable. What else might I have that has some sort of unrealized gain? Well, if I own something that is accrued in value, that goes up. I've got to pay tax on that. Will they come and tax the house? Well, they're already doing that as far as the locale, but, but the federal government would also be open that. When she made, when they, when they signed the bill or they were trying to bring in um, 80,000 more, 80,000 more, um, IRS agents. That's the reason why when she says, I'm going, I don't want to tax, um, I don't want to tax tips where well, you literally signed a bill one, um, in California, you were, you were part of this, I'm sorry, as, as a Senator. And then as a cat the tie casting vote, um, as the vice president to enforce taxation of these gains from, let's say these, uh, uh, these side hustles like Uber and, and DoorDash. So yeah, so what she says doesn't line up in terms of her economic policy. And then to add $25,000 and to build however many millions of homes, that is stupid. And I mean with a capital S-T-U-P-I-D. Absolutely ignorant. Y'all do re recall what happened the last housing crisis, what it did. So you're going to automatically inflate prices because you offer $25,000. Well, guess what? If I'm selling a house and there's still a seller's market, if I'm selling a house, well, then now guess what I just added? $25,000. Oh, by the way, people aren't trying to necessarily refinance or buy a house right now because previously you've got folks that are sitting at 3, 4, 5% interest rate, and now they're going to change that for uh, 8, 9, 10% interest rate. So you're going to screw up the market. You're already bringing extra people into the economy. When you bring when you bring this many people into the economy, what happens when you've got more folks into the economy? Well, when you got more folks working, be they legal or illegal, that means you've got more cash, more dollars out there. When you've got more dollars out there, it devalues the rest of the dollars. So if you've got ten thousand dollars in your bank account, if you should be so lucky, your ten thousand dollars buying power is diminished because you've got more people coming in. When you want to put a cap on what people can buy. How many of y'all remember these rolling black blackouts? Uh, I think it was was it was Gray Davis the governor of California at that time when California put a cap on what they could what they could charge and pay for for electricity even coming from other states. And what it did was it decreased the amount of power they had to send out. And so California had these rolling blackouts. That's what happens. So even the the, the biblical issues economically we are we are we are headed for a disaster if that's the case we are educated about pride you are I, I don't know what the issue is with you brother but we are educated about project 25 Pro, is pride I tell you what is project 25 2025 is that a, a, a Trump issue is that part no it's not I don't know why why you guys you sat and listened to the DNC uh, all night and you heard them bring it up and they weren't fact checked on it because that's not an issue but now my point is about this that we're seeing as Americans, we weren't for that. And so, yeah, Dinah, it's OK. As a matter of fact, it's good to be worried about the economy. Christians, as Jesus told us, we should be so we should be so shrewd. We're not. I, I, sometimes I just wonder if Christians happen to be the dumbest people on the planet or I should say dumbest, but the most gullible. 
Men love dark. Amen, Walter. Men love darkness rather than truth. Amen. Um, and, and you know what, Walter? When I was a political science major in college, and I remember I remember coming back and telling people about how things work. I'm like, no, no, no. It's almost like talking to a brick wall. Some folks, they're just not going to, to hear it. Do you think it's appropriate to legislate what the Bible says? Example, being having adultery uh, as a criminal act. I feel as a Christian, no abortion, but uh, but feel you, you can't legislate. No, you can't legislate. Uh, uh, you can't legislate morality. But here's what you can do, ladies and gentlemen, as it, as it pertains to morality, as it pertains to those things. Here's what we're supposed to do. If we live as Christians in such a way, if we are light, Guess what the world's going to see? Light. Guess how about this? What if all of the people who call themselves Christians, what if we wanted godly candidates? Or what if we wanted at least not necessarily godly candidates, but candidates that wanted to portray a godly sort of agenda? Well, how could we do so? Well, if Christians acted like Christians, irrespective of politics, irrespective of the, of the economy, if Christians acted like Christians, then there are 60-something percent of the people of America that call themselves Christians. They're not, but what if they acted like it and told people that? Then what would these, these people that are power-hungry, what would they do to get in office? They would cater to the Christian community. As it is now, though, they don't cater to the Christian community. What they do now is they cater to other communities. They cater, they cater to the alphabet community. They cater to people um, who maybe shouldn't be here. That's what they do. Now, here's another thing to think about. Let me ask you guys a question. Let me let me strike some, some fear in your heart. Let me strike some fear in your heart. And I would ask this question. Matter of fact, let me let me let me get let me get Trump and the guys on the line. Let me call them. <laughs> here's my question. Matter of fact, here's my question to all the people that uh, are uh, against Trump and for Kamala. Here's my quick. Here, here's here's my question. I'm gonna. Matter of fact, let's put it on the screen. Let's put you guys' chat on the screen. And so some of you guys are gonna see comments from the the other channel and from the main channel. Um. How many? And I want I want to ask you guys this question, and I want you guys to answer this question. How many terrorists are in the country? While you guys are figuring that out, let me drink. How many terrorists are now in the country? It's my question. I, I, I want you guys, especially those guys that are against what I've said so far, how many of you guys are know exactly how many terrorists are in the country? Many have no idea. A lot. Brian said 7,842. Three. How, how many terrorists are in the country? There's only one good answer. There's only one right answer. I don't know. Deidre says unknown. We don't know. Why did I ask that question? Because they've captured at least 180 people on the terrorist watch list that have come through the southern border. 180 people on the terrorist watch list have come through the southern border. Well, what does that mean, Corey? Well, that means we've only caught 180. We don't know how many made it through. Secondly, how many terrorists came through that are not on the terrorist watch list? See, sometimes we forget exactly what, we, what, what happened 30 years ago. Sometimes we forget what happened. There were some guys that got on a plane and took two buildings down, hit the pentagram and also crashed a plane in Pennsylvania. Fields, something's happening with these fields in Pennsylvania. We know there have been over 100 some people from different countries that, that have been brought in from China and other places. So question how many, we don't know. We don't, we don't know. Didn't, that, didn't we didn't we vow to never have that happen again to not know 
the the KKK and the American Nazi Party have endorsed one of the two candidates. Guess which one? Yes, I get that. But guess what? So to have the pro-Palestinian uh, and, and pro-terrorist parties endorse the other candidate. So what do you do when someone who's evil and wicked wants to endorse you? What do you do? Is, is that something that you can fix? You can, no. Did he ask for them? Has he, has he, has he rallied for them? Has he, has he gone to visit? No, he hasn't. See, we go by this, this little mantra that the man is racist. How about we stop calling the man racist because everyone that's calling him racist didn't call him racist six, seven, eight years ago when he was on their television show, when they were meeting him, Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, the folks at The View, the folks at MSNBC, the folks at CNN, they were all calling, they, this man was not a racist, good man. This, they were goo eyed over this man then. Now all of a sudden he's racist. Why? Because he's Republican. But what about the Central Park Five? He literally called for them. He really, he really called for these men, the Central Park Five, to be um, executed. Have you heard that before? Trump literally called for the Central Park Five to be executed. How many of y'all heard that? Well, problem. Problem. He did not. Yes, he did. That's all they talk about. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. Yeah. Let me ask you guys a question. Let me ask you guys a question. How many of you all have actually read the full page article that Trump took out? You're right, Cephas. Rappers love Trump. I mean, by the way, did y'all know that he was mentioned in, 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 uh, in more rap songs than any other person, any other, especially other than Jesus? And I, th I think I think it was Jesus and Martin Luther King. I think those I think those two um, um, had more mentions in rap lyrics than Trump. So Trump is third. But how many of y'all have actually read the the full page ad that Trump took out? I did. D do you know what Trump doesn't mention? He doesn't even mention the Central Park Five. Now I'm going to put it on the screen. You guys can take a screenshot and go back and read because it might be a little bit too hard for you guys to read it. But this is the article that he took out. And you know what Trump is talking about? All he's talking about is being tough on crime, which is what we talked about earlier. That's it. So do a screenshot or you can just Google it and it'll come up and you'll see what he's talking about. He's just asking for there to be tough, be tough on crime. He mentions he mentioned something that we all mentioned about kids being able to walk in the park and go down the street and not be harassed and being tough on these thugs and these criminals that want to kill other people. He said, if you kill someone, I think you should be killed, too. That was his. That was his. That's all he was saying. Now, again, I'm not for Trump. I'm not a pro-Trump person. I'm just anti-Kamala. That's what I am. I'm just anti-foolishness. I'm anti the people that definitely are not like us, who say they are and are not. That's what I am. Um... Is this a pro-Israel channel? Channel? We're not pro-Israel. We're pro-Bible, and God does say, "God bless. God will bless those who bless you, and curses will curse you." And so, ultimately, God is God is pro-Israel. Now, even though Israel is wicked and evil and have turned their back on God, what is God going to ultimately do? So, really, truth, truth be told, whether we are pro-Israel or anti-Israel doesn't really matter. God is, and so God doesn't really care too much about what we think about the matter, but he will use us as he, as he sees fit. Amen. Uh, let's see. Stop campaigning for simple for sinful Trump. I'll talk about a 2.0. Talk about something else. Give, it, give us something else to go off of because I'm not, talking, I'm not campaigning for Trump. I'm campaigning against Kamala. I would like to see our country last a little bit longer. I would like to see us extend the life of this country. Do you believe that because we know our world is going to get worse that Miss Harris might get in? I could see her getting in. Now, let me say this. Let, matter of fact, Brian, and you, you know what, Brian, because you're bald and it's just innate. But I don't know if you, most bald people get this. Most, most bald folks get this. Now, some of you, some of you, some of you men with hair might not get it, but most bald folks get this. Okay. So let me ask you guys a question. One, I'm not even sure if she's in the lead. I actually, I actually kind of think, I actually kind of think 
that he is still leading. I think, I think, I think he's leading. I think he's lead. I think he's leading. First of all, uh, we already know you didn't have to. We are brother. We already knew that. <laughs> we already knew you was voting for it. That wasn't. That was not a secret. But remember, let's go back to 2016. Hillary Clinton was destroying Trump. She was up by 10 points in the polls and the look on their face on election night and the day after just, and we said, why do we, why do we, why do we listen to these people tell us? They don't know. They don't know uh, what the people are thinking. And then you see these people doing these little interviews and, and, and folks, listen, people's hearts, especially, let me say this. If Trump gets 20% of the black vote, that's it. She can't win. Now, Willie don't have no idea. Have no idea. There's no way to know. But also this, y'all remember two, year, two years ago, three years ago, y'all remember this, what the media was telling us to do. This is why you cannot go back and trust these folks and listen to these folks. These are the very same folks that were ostracizing us um, and destroying us over anyone that did not have the vaccine. If you didn't get the vaccine, you were evil, you were wicked, you were heartless, all those things. All those things. Well, were they wrong? The folks that didn't get the vaccine, how many folks that didn't get the vaccine are saying, man, doggone it, I wish I would have got that vaccine. No, now you got folks that have gotten the vaccine like, I wish I wouldn't have got it, and I definitely ain't getting a little booster shot. And I'm not blaming anyone for getting it because we were at a time where it was just crazy. Folks were trying to hurry up and get, you know, figure out what's happening. There were some folks that were dying, but I remember being said earlier, if it's like the flu, you can't stop it. It literally has to run through people, run its course, and then people will build up an immunity, herd immunity. You remember that term? And what happens with all the vaccinations, with all of this and all of that, with all the, the lockdowns and so forth? And now the folks that, that were for all those things, they're distancing themselves. But all of those folks, all of those folks said, you got to this, you got to that and so forth. And what happened? It didn't, it didn't do a thing. You get the vaccination and you were just as likely to give it to someone else as someone who didn't. The only thing that you had, the only thing that would be good is if you were a little baby because kids didn't get it, I guess. So, or I should say they didn't get it. They weren't as vulnerable as susceptible. Um, ask more. Let me ask more questions. Keep going. Trump says Native American casinos shouldn't be allowed because they don't look like Indian people. Here's the reason why. Go back and look what was happening in New Jersey. Let me ask you a question. How many, Dinah's from New York. How many of you guys are from New York in, in here? How many, how many of you guys uh, in the chats are from New York, the, the, the little area? Is that the Tri-State area, whatever area? Uh, New York, New Jersey. How many of you folks are from that area? I want, I want to know how many, how, why is this, this part of the computer shutting down? How many of you guys are from that area? And I, I, I love Khan. Khan, you, I, I don't, Khan, I don't think you read. I, I, I'm sorry, but I, and I'm, I'm going to deal. Khan, you are the person for the night. How many people? Okay, Theodore's from Brooklyn. Who else? Uh, De Delando is from. Hey, my brother, hey brother, hey, from, uh, from New Jersey. Who else? Who, who else is from that area? Let me ask you guys a question. And I'm not. I, how many Native Americans? do you see in New York, in that area? You don't see a lot. So what was happening was people were claiming to be, there were some that were legitimate and some that were not. And he says, wait a second, this guy looks like me, or let's put it this way, this guy looks like, where, where are you at, Brian? I just saw Brian. Uh, this guy looks like Brian, who is saying he's a, a, a Native American, Wait a minute, Trump's like, hold on, wait a second. We y'all giving these licenses out to everybody who is who is an Indian. Remember, remember, we've got a senator, Senator Warren, who said she was a <laughs> who said she was an Indian. So that was his point. That was his point. Let me go back to Khan again. I'll leave Khan alone for a while. But then Khan turns around and comes back and says, Trump calls for a ban on all Muslims in the U.S. Khan, would you stop typing? Go read. Go Google something. Just, just brother, go Google something. He did, okay, he called for a temporary ban on 
not all Muslim majority countries, but the very same countries that Barack Obama also listed as um, terrorist countries. And so therefore, just like he did, he did even more so those people, there was a, a temporary ban or block on people from those countries coming in. Remember, 9-11 wasn't too far away. So why would you let people from Iran come in? Why would you let people from Syria come in? Why? Oh, by the way, there's, there was still a ban on North Korea. So you're going to have to, you're going to have to just read. And I understand, I understand it's easy to, to think uh, about something that you hadn't read about. That makes sense. Something somebody brought up with, with, with that, if she wins, does this usher in the beginning of, of the Jezebel era? We, we won't be the first country to have to be led by a woman. Um, England did so, not under the Queen, but Margaret Thatcher. Canada has had a female prime minister, I believe. So other countries have, but the more, most powerful country ever, that's never happened. How will other countries look at us? I'm pretty sure other countries will, th will think differently of us. I think other countries will want to try us. I think China would want to try us. I think Russia would definitely want to do so. I think other countries would try because they would they would perceive the woman as being, now she may not be weak, but they are going to perceive that. And they're going to also look at our foreign policy over the last few years. And so therefore, it might usher in something else. Uh, and That's off topic, but yes, they are. They are. They are meant to be an, an, an insult. Upside down crosses are meant to be an insult. Um, how about George Floyd? All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Let me drink my coffee. Let me drink my coffee. Because the man, the myth, the legend is going to be trashed here, George Floyd. The man, the myth, the legend, that is George Floyd. Yeah, there is no Jezebel period era, though. Uh, I should have said that. There, there is no Jezebel era. Um, but I think his point is this feeling of a Jezebel, this attitude that embodied Jezebel, I don't think so. I think the world's just on its way to where it's going anyway. But let me say this about George Floyd. This is for you colors, not not you, David. David, I'm, I can't tell. Forgive me if you are a um, if you are uh, black uh, or not. If you light skin, if you are Hispanic, if you if you white, you may even be um, Asian, which means you could be Russian. <laughs> Have you ever noticed the people that represent the black community? The good ones seem to be rappers and artists, movie stars and things like that. But not the not 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 the white community. No, Taylor Swift is not representative of the white. No one is going asking her about policy. No, no, no one's going to. to you know what? Look, even the Hispanic community, no one's really going to George Lopez and asking him what what what, what do you think about this as related? No. But but our mascots tend to be people that we just, why? As it relates to George Floyd, there seems to be a vacuum of leaders. Not, not really, but there seems to be a, a lack of attention on actual true leaders. So because of that, George Floyd gets attention where he should not. George Floyd was a man who previously held a pregnant woman at gunpoint. George Floyd did not embody anything of a good citizen. Now, does that mean that he deserved to get what he got? No. Now, you do suffer consequences. And so if you rob, a, I'm not saying you rob a liquor store, but if you rob a liquor store and you get shot in the process, you kind of have that coming. Hope you don't. Hope you get the opportunity to change and come back around. But those are things that happen. If I go, these are the, this is what the, the Bible says about these sin, a sin. If you see your brother um, involved in a sin that leads to death, a sin that can directly cause death. For example, if you want to go and rob a police station, 
If you want to go and rob a police station, that's a sin that probably is going to lead to death. If you want to engage in terrorist activity, that is a sin that will lead to death. But as far as George Floyd, he committed a sin that obviously led to his physical death. And did he, did he deserve that? No. Was was the officer wrong? Now, some will say that he was he was following the handbook. He should not have died for that. But he's not a hero. He's not a hero. In, in any metric, is George Floyd a hero? We don't, we should not ever put him up here when you've got actual people that have done far more and far more deserving. You're saying that's false. It, it's not, it's not false. It is true. It is true. But listen, if you want to, let me just say this. Even if it ain't false, he was not a good human being. How about that? He, he did, he does, he did not do anything deserving of accolades. Do I like David? I do like David Jeremiah. I actually do. I have a buddy of mine that, that I think went to the church. I don't know if he still does or not. Um, do I think that white evangelicals are Christ followers or inwardly Christians in name? Some are. Some are. There are white folks who are um, as Republican as as a NASCAR vehicle is fast. Uh, and that's really what they are. And so they go to church because I'm supposed to go to church. I'm a God-fearing God American and I got to go to church and live nothing and live no godly life. There are white evangelicals who are... Um, just Christian in name only, but then again, there are also some blacks who are also Christian in name only. That's just kind of the, the problem that we have as a body. So, and again, I'm not, I'm not for, uh, the church promoting any of the characters, any of these two, but what I am saying is in terms of policy that will hurt us and that are not what a Christian should be doing. No, he says, Trump is what made America look weak and divided. So let me ask you this question born again, uh, new creature. Why are you voting for her? You haven't said so. You haven't given a reason for it. That, you're one of the ones I'm looking to. Why? Why? Because we knew you were going to vote for her from the first time you said something. Why? What's your, why is anyone who is voting for her? I'm fine. Why? Why? What spirit do I see in Trump? I think he is uh, egomaniacal. He's, he's, he's on the, the, I don't know if he's narcissistic, but he if if he's not if he is, it makes sense. If he's not, he's barely not. Sometimes we call everybody a narcissist and everyone's not a narcissist. Some folks are just selfish. Being selfish does not make you a narcissist or arrogant or, you know. But uh I you we'll, we'll give it again. I didn't see your reason. There, there's there's 3,000, 4,000 comments. I can't see all your reasons. So I don't know. Um so what spirit do I, I, I see him as a very arrogant, self-serving person? Just like everybody else that I see in Congress, who who do you know in Congress that's not self-serving? I think not not you, but I see that in him. That's necessarily not necessarily a good or bad thing. It's just what it is. Um, do I think that he is? Um, I think he he is first first of all he's not a very good orator. I think he's also a. Um, I think he is though. Um, he understands what he wants to do and he goes about doing it. So he is, he's a strong leader. You think Matt Gates is not? Um, I think they all are. Now, I don't know their heart. But you, you, you say, you say, I'm the one to go there and fix the problems. It takes a, it takes a lot of, a lot of ego to say that. It takes a lot of ego to say that. And I, hold on, Greg, I agree with that. Where, where did, I just saw it. Greg says, you can vote for anyone. You're not required to vote Republican. You're right. You don't have to vote Republican. You don't have to vote for any of these people. You are not required to vote, period. If you think that these are two evil, if you feel like I'm voting for the lesser of two evils, then why are you voting anyway? I'm not I'm not voting for um, uh, someone that I think is just is just representative of evil. I don't think I don't think Trump is representative of evil evil. He's not representative of godliness um, or his intention isn't that. Uh, I think now he himself uh, lives a wicked lifestyle, but what he's trying to do, I don't think is evil. I think what she's trying to do is evil. That's the difference. Call. I have no idea how Call of Duty is. I don't, I don't know what that is. Is that one of those, like, those, those war fighting games? 
Um, so, so, but anyway, but you know what? Wait a second. I, I want to see what your what your reason is, what your rationale is. I want to I want to see what it is. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to find any files. Of it. Okay, I I don't see your you you said you gave your reason why you'll be voting for Kamala. I don't I don't see it. I don't I don't see it. So you actually didn't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so now you never told us why you're why you voted. I would I would love to see why you are. I would love to know because listen, if you got a good reason, I think it's incumbent upon you. I think it's responsible for you to tell us why we should also. Al, hold on, Al. You mean like as in Al Sharpton, or Al Gore, or what Al? Which Al? I don't, I don't know which Al you're talking about. So, do I, do I play video games? No, I do not. No, I, no, I don't, I don't play video games. Um, I tried to play a video game one time with my grandsons, and I, no, I'm sorry, no, not my, grand, my granddaughters. Um, I, nah, nope. <laughs> my wife when they when they hook up the little machine to the to the TV um she'll play with them just to have some fun and she didn't know what she's doing. Oh, you said AI. Okay. Um will it make a comeback? I don't think it's I think it's it's making a charge. I don't think it's going anywhere. So, yeah, I I think we're going to see more and more AI everywhere. Unfortunately. So, Uh, what'd you say, Nicole? If a Christian is voting, it should be the party against slavery and abortion. Well, I don't know that anybody's voting for uh, slavery since that's not there anymore. We don't have to worry about slavery. I th Let me just say this, and I'm enjoying this, by the way. Uh, one of the things that I used to do, by the way, J Double, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. He says, does Dave, let me, I'll, okay, I'll come back to that. I'll come back to your question. But one of the things that made me really, really start looking at what people think. Let me put this on the screen. I want to ask you guys a question. Is it true? Is it false? Y'all tell me. The Constitution calls blacks three-fifths of a person. Does, the con does our Constitution teach us that blacks are less than human beings, are less of a person? Um, are you in school and what is your school? I'm at Dallas Theological Seminary. And I'm, well, I'm studying a lot of different things, but my, but the master's program is master's of theology. But do y'all believe that the, that the Bible, that the constitution teaches that black people are less than other people? Three fifths. Thank you, Robert. No, it does not. The constitution does not. And this is one of the reasons why as a political science major, I wonder, you know what? I think it, it'd be good to let folks know. It does not. It does not tell us that blacks are less than a person or three fifths of a person. What it says is, in regards to this was a compromise in regards to slaves counting for representation. So Congress is trying to figure out. Well, first of all, each state gets two senators, but what about representatives? Well, the bigger the population, the more the representatives. And so what about these southern states that didn't have uh, as much of a population as, let's say, New York or Pennsylvania? What about them? They didn't have slavery. So they said, well, wait a second. It, now, remember, these are also states that did not want slavery. We think that America was just a vile place, and to some degree it was. But remember, slavery passed in the, in the Union by one vote. By one vote did we have slavery in America. So remember, you got a lot of... Uh, uh, states that did not want slavery. And then you had the southern states that did. So what happened was, in order to fix this, New York and, and Pennsylvania and Connecticut, so they, they didn't want Connecticut. New York, Pennsylvania, these places, they did, they did not want um, them to have their slaves to count as people in terms of the represent, representation. If, if they don't have the rights as people, why then are we going to turn around and, and give you a benefit for that for your representation, because that way your policy, your politics and policies will end up 
uh, dominated. So the compromise was, if you want us to be part of this union, listen, we can kick rocks and do our own thing. So the compromise was we'll let them count as three-fifths of a person, that is, if they are slaves, uh, be they white or black, be they white or black. So therefore, uh, the Constitution never stated that black people were three-fifths of a human being. Amen? Okay. <laughs> the, the Republicans plan to bring back slavery with Project 2025. Can you tell us what page that's on, please? What page in Project, and again, Project 2025 is not part of the Trump agenda. <laughs> so, so let me, not part of the Trump agenda, but what page is that on? What what page is that on? That That's funny. That, that, that's funny. What, what do you say about those who say we're not voting for a password, we're voting, we're not voting for a password, so it's okay to vote for Kamala? We're not voting for a pastor, but we still are Christians who have to live in this world. And we ought to be shrewd. Jesus um, was bothered at the fact that how the world is far more shrewd than Christians. Because we love the Lord and have the Holy Spirit, that means that we, ha we have to just become doormats and let everything happen. We have a voice. And so therefore, therefore, we have the right to stand up. If the system allows for us to be accounted, we can be counted. Amen. So, for example, how many of you all? If the trash man doesn't come and pick up your trash, are you going to call down there and say, hey, come get this trash? How many of you are you going to say something? Right. So it's OK to make your voices heard. Uh, my 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 lo my loish, my loish, I'm not sure if I'm saying this correctly. Forgive me if I'm, if I'm saying it incorrectly. You said you're lying when you say 2025 is not the find it. You can, I'll tell you what you can do. While you're here, prove it. I will I will cash app you $100 if, if you can prove it. If you can prove 2025, Project 2025 is part of the Republican agenda. If you can prove it, I will email me and I will cash app you or whatever it's in you, $100. Now, it's almost as though folks folks have forgotten that. See, here, here can I tell you what's funny? Can I tell you what's funny? We've got two candidates who we can literally point to their time in office and compare. When you people say that Trump is going to take us back to slavery, did he? <laughs> Not that he will. Did he? Were you uh, were you enslaved? Did you ever fear for your constitutional freedoms then? What constitutional right was taken away under Trump? What constitutional right was even encroached upon? What constitutional right was even brought up for a vote to be taken away. Please tell me. I'd, I'd, I'd be, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in hearing. I'd love to, whose plan is Project 2025? It's part of the Heritage Foundation. Are there some people at the Heritage Foundation that um, are uh, either served with, or were part of, part of his cabinet or are friendly with them? Yeah, okay. Well, then how about the Green New Deal? This uber trillion dollar plan, is that part of the Democratic platform? No, it's not. But how many people are part of the Green New Deal who are on Kamala's um, or going to be part of Kamala's committee? Oh, I know Kamala herself, who signed up and was one of the co-sponsors of the Green New Deal. Is the Green New Deal a part of the Democratic platform policy? Well, we don't know because they don't have much of a policy on there. So stop saying this. Project 2025 is not part of the, you can go look at uh, Agenda 47, I believe that's what it is, but it's not. So, but again, I'm interested in, I'm interested in seeing who's voting for, who's voting for Kamala. Fine, fine, fine. I just want to know your reasons. Why? Because if you're voting for her, you should tell us why we all should as well. Why everyone else should vote for Kamala. So, okay, you said he's, okay, again, again, prove it to me, prove it to me. I'll send you $100. Got the phone out right now. And you know I'm good for it because I got a Colt sign on there. So you know I'm good for it. If it was a cowboy sign, you know I'm not good for it. But did, did not the KKK come out? 
more when he was in office? Where? Where where do we where do we see the KKK marching? Where do we see that? Now we did see the folks in Charlottesville and he came out and said that he condemned them, even though folks keep saying, well, he 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 praised the neo-Nazis. No, he didn't. He called them people bad. So where? I tell you what we did see come out though. <laughs> we saw the rise of BLM. So maybe no Trump, you can't come out because we saw the the rise of BLM. Um <laughs> I honestly don't understand how some people can call themselves Christian and support a party that is in large favor of abortion for abortion. I don't know either. Can I just can I can I gross you guys out for a second? I think it's important. I think it's important that I gross you guys out. What happens in and there are different types of abortions? Um, was the D and E basically you're dismembering the baby and extracting the baby parts? That might be. Let's see which which form of abortion is the least humane or the more humane. I don't know how to put it. Which, which, uh, and by the way, the same goes for you, born again, uh, new creature, creature. You tell me if it's part of his platform, I'll send, I'll cash app you the money as well. Because <laughs> you can't. But which is worse? Inserting tools inside the womb where the baby is. Dismembering the baby. If the baby's small enough and then vacuuming the baby out, extracting the baby in pieces. And we know what it looks like because we've seen literally, they have these crates, these barrels, and little tiny fingers and hands and arms and forearms and torsos. We've, we've seen that. Is that gross? Is that horrible? Yeah, it is. I want you to know that. I want you to know that. That's pretty bad, right? No, lovely. I, I, I have to. I want people to. I want people to understand this, how disgusting and vile this is. Or how about late-term abortions? Do late? Is there? Is which states have had late-term abortions? Well, every state in the United States has had a late-term abortion, and it be protected. Now things have changed lately, obviously. Well, what happens in a late-term abortion? By the way, when Roe v. Wade was being passed, there was another sister um, uh, case that was also passed the same day. And in that case, it allowed for late-term abortions. Roe v. Wade did not allow for late-term abortion, abortions, but the but the other, uh, I can, it, it escapes me right now, but that other one allowed for late-term abortions. What happens in a late-term abortion? First of all, they put the baby in breach. How many of you ladies ladies will tell you that when a baby is in breach, that also can hurt, harm the mother? And so why do they put the baby in breach? Rather than the head coming out first, let's turn the baby around. Let's turn the baby around so that we can bring the baby out partially, which you get the term partial birth abortion. Partial birth abortion is the baby is delivered partially. Now, at that point in time, what doctors and nurses will tell you is that the difficult part is making sure the baby didn't come all the way out. Making sure the baby didn't come all the way out, which at that point in time, the body naturally wants to push the baby out. Hold up, baby. Stay right there. Let's make sure the baby's face is face down so we can get a good, nice view of the back of the baby's skull. Make the incision at the base of the skull. Insert a tube that would then bring out all the contents. <clears throat> then collapse the baby, the brain, the head, and here comes the baby. Which one is less vile? Was, was, that, was that disgusting? You're right. In both cases, Dinah, the baby feels them both. Is that disgusting? Is it, is it hard? It should be hard to listen to. It should be hard to listen to. Because that's what happens in a late term abortion. So you're not going to talk. Um, 
to talk Trump. Okay, the Heritage Plans just two days ago. Is, yes or no, my, 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 my Loish, my, whatever your name is, my Loish, my Loish, is it part of his agenda? No, it's not. No, it's not. So, a few more questions and we're going to leave. Uh, does Daniel 2.21 apply to the election? Let's go to Daniel 2.21. <laughs> it is he who changes the times and epochs. He removes kings and establishes kings. He gives wisdom to wise men and, and knowledge to men of understanding. I think so. I think ultimately what ends up happening is that we end up getting, I th when a person comes in leadership, it can only happen at um, or through the hands of God. Not necessarily his, it, I, you know, I, I really want to see, God is not in heaven saying, I really want to see Trump win this. He's not in heaven saying, you know, I really want to see Kamala win this. That's not what he's doing. But ultimately, the leader that we get, the king that we get is the one that we deserve. And ultimately, that's going to be the one that's going to push us closer to what God is doing. So, therefore, I see where it applies. Uh-oh, I hit the wrong button. His racist comments such as, you're living in poverty, your schools are no good, you have no jobs, 50% of your youth is unemployed, what the hell do you have to lose? <laughs> okay, Michelle, let me say it to you colored folks. <laughs> let me say it. Tell me this is racist. You colored folk, you are living in poverty. A large chunk of black folks and Hispanic folks are living in poverty. Your schools are no good. Is that right? Are the schools that most black kids go to, are they any good? No, they are not. How do I know? Well, my wife is a teacher. Most of the kids in DISD, same thing with Houston, same thing with Austin, same thing with New York, same thing with Chicago, are overrun with black and Hispanic kids. The white kids aren't there as, as, as prevalent. And so the schools are horrible. Who in America thinks that public schools are good? Find that person. Secondly, you have no jobs. Well, who has typically has the lower paying jobs in America? Black folks. What percentage of black folks are under the poverty level or at poverty level? A lot. A lot. Is that part true? Yes. 58% of youth is unemployed. Yes. Matter of fact, what else he could have said is that 61% of all crime is committed by blacks. He could also say that 51% of all murders in the country are by blacks. You have these democratic controlled cities, uh, municipalities, states. You've been voting for them year after year after year after year after year. Yeah, what the heck do you have to lose? Thank you. Is that how is that racist? Tell me what the racist part was that because other blacks say it. What do you have? Matter of fact, here's what's funny. The person in office is talking about how bad the economy is. The person in office is talking about how bad the schools are. The person in office is talking about fixing the border. The person in office is talking about the about the economy, all these things like that. The person in office is in office. How are you going to fix it when you should have been fixing it? Well, on day one, I'm going to do this on day one. Well, this is day 1,200 and whatever. <laughs> this is not day one with you. So, yeah, um, What about Newsom, Alabama? You keep saying, "Are you going? Am I, am I going to?" All you're doing is throwing out, throwing out things. So, do I think Trump is the answer? Heck, no. Trump is not the answer. Listen, la ladies and gentlemen, Trump is not the answer. Have I got a witness? <laughs> Trump is not the answer. Jesus is the answer, but anybody can say Jesus is the answer. Well, how about this? Christians in America are the answer. Yeah, Deron, why be, why be offended by the truth? Christians in America are the answer. Why do you say that? Well, if Christians in America acted like Christians, well, wow, how awesome would that be? If Christians acted like Christians, therefore, people will stand up and take notice. They take us for, they, they neglect us. You know why? Because those Christian folks, some of you guys in the chat, you're not like us. You, you're not. You don't care that people flaunt and taunt you, taunt your, your religion. You don't care about that at all. No. So, no, he's not the answer, though. Uh, give tax cuts to the rich and put a middle finger up about. OK, let's talk about these tax cuts. 
when you give now here here's my economic brain coming on but let me let me come i'm gonna come back to you samurai i'm gonna come back to you samurai because i i got you know i'm i'm gonna I'm deal go to samurai and then i'll go to kurt gal gillian in just a second i'll deal with kurt gillian in just a second god bless you brother please stick around <laughs> no hate like christian love okay if you say so um most people in the chats, if you work for somebody, you work for somebody with money. What happens? What happens if the people, if these companies, if these corporations have more of their money, if you if you increase their tax bill, if you increase their tax liability, what do they do? So let's say it's you, Samurai. Let's say it's let's matter of fact, let's use everybody. Let's say it's Jennifer A. Let's say it's OG. Let's say it's it's Cephas. Let's say it's Dutch. You all have a company. You make a million you, you profit a million dollars a year. You can pay all your employees just fine at a million dollars a year. Problem is your employees, the, the greatest, the greatest cost of your company is is and of your overhead is um paying them. They want more money. Why? Because the cost of goods and services is going up. You can't keep paying them what you're paying them. Um, today as what you paid them 10 years ago. So now, here you have to pay these people more. And you would like to. As a matter of fact, you would like to bring on more talent. Matter, You wouldn't even mind expanding. You wouldn't mind offering greater benefits. But if the government says, you know what, we're going to charge you more. We're, go we're going to hit you with a greater tax liability. We're going to also increase um, the corporate tax rate, capital gains rate as well. What are you? What are you going to do? You're, one, you're not going to hire. Two, offering raises. Nah, and if you're big, if you're if you're a smart business person, you're planning for the future. So what happens? That also means you might have to lay some folks out because you want to keep enough cash in reserve. Now this is how it works. You can like it or dis or not like it. I am, I am distinctive jewel. I am. Um, so what would a company? What would a corporation do? Now, do you want the government to give you money? Or do you want to get your money from an actual business in hopes that you can do the exact same thing? Nowhere in the world has a high tax rate ever benefited that country. You can't name a country that has a high tax rate and people are flocking to it uh, and business is booming. You just can't. You can't find one where it's existed for a long period of time with a high tax rate, especially if you're going to tax the businesses. It's just difficult. Why? Because people work for businesses. If you want folks working for the government, well, then fine. Good luck with that. So uh, when we say tax the rich, what is the... Now, the other day, Joe Biden said the, the billionaires have a uh, an effective tax rate of 8%. That's not true. The IRS has stated that as of 2020, which is the, 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 the best one that we can go off of, as of 2020, uh, the tax rate for uh, billionaires is 23.7%. So now do that, do they have different things they do to kind of loopholes, what have you, or incentives? Sure. Just like we do too. Just like we do too. So therefore, um, let me look at this real quick. Okay. Why is that like that over here? One channel is getting this, the other channel is getting that. So, uh, I'm monitoring the, my signal on both channels. So, um, you do need to give, uh, make sure corporations aren't, aren't strangled by a particular tax rate. Ladies and gentlemen, who pays their fair uh, percentage of taxes? You do realize that 80% of the taxes in America, 80 plus somewhere in that area, now it's changed, uh, it varies, by, but about 80% of the taxes, the tax base in America comes from the top, I think it's five or 10%. Somebody have to fact check me and make sure, but somewhere in that area. The wealthy do pay their fair share. The wealthy also hire. And you want the wealthy to have incentive to be wealthy. You want you want to make sure that people that are not wealthy have an incentive to be wealthy. You want people to get a return on their money. To, you want to spur people on to invest. Amen? Now, my new best friend, my new best friend, Corey, I have lost all respect for you. Your personal political views are just, just. I question your your biblical views now as well. Well, I'm sorry. 
I don't know what you want me to do. So, so you only respect me, Kurt, if my political views are the same as yours. That, 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 that makes it if, so if I believe what you believe now, have I said anything wrong? If I've said anything wrong with an amen, fine, no problem, no problem. But you got to tell me if it's wrong. I don't have, I don't have a problem with, with, with you losing respect for me that listen, maybe I deserve to have respect uh, loss, but you got to tell me why. Okay. He says that was harsh. Um, apologies, but you didn't mean it though, (laughs) but you didn't mean it. So am I your enemy, not yours, but anyone else? Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? If I've told a lie, let me know. And you can disagree with it. And you're like, I I, say it ain't so, Corey. I don't want to go against, I don't want to go against um, my my, my buddy, my friend, Kamala. And by the way, I cannot stand when folks are trying to correct folks on her name, Kamala or Kamala. If you got a, if your name ain't Mary or Frank or Beth or Sue or Corey, uh, and folks mispronounce it, she's had that all her all, all her life. And I've heard even other people, black folks, mispronounce her name. So let's not let's stop making that racist. Also, thank you, O'Cuff. He says, "Tell it like it is, like Aaron Neville." Amen, amen. <laughs> um, Corey, where do most black folks live? Is it mostly cities? Um, well, if you listen to folks that think that it's hard for us to get. Uh, licenses and IDs, you would swear they thought that we lived in the country, in the rural areas. But no, most black people live in urban areas. The overwhelming majority of people live in urban areas in cities like Dallas or the metro- in metropolitan areas. Most black people in America do. So, yeah, now he says, uh, is that why there is such a crime rate? No, yeah. Let's tell the truth, shame the devil. Um, we got a crime issue with us black folks. We, we just do. And the reason why is because people give us a way out. I think, I think, and I said this before, me going to prison was one of the best things. One of the best things. Because when you get humiliated and humbled, humiliation is just force humbling. <laughs> it's just you not wanting to humble yourself. When you get there and you realize, man, I'm horrible, rotten, uh, and this is what I need. You come out, you come out different. You come out different. So here's what, matter of fact, William said this most is caused by liberal policies. Let me say, let me say, let me tell you guys why this is caused by liberal policies. <clears throat> Crime in America isn't what it is because of the incarceration rate. No, the incarceration rate has to do with a couple of things. One, education, which is also a byproduct of fathers not being there. And so, and you go back to, and you think it's not the case, but you go back to the 70s and 80s, 60s, 70s and 80s, you had a lot of people opting to not be married. Why? Because when you go to the welfare office, when you go to get WIC, or you go to get food stamp or anything else, um, if the father is there in the household, then all bets are off. I think I told you guys a story before. My father wasn't wasn't too sure I was his. (laughs) Um, I'm lighter than all my other brothers and my father and mother are darker. And so my father, Hey, what gives this boy, this, this boy, a little lighter. Now, what happened was my father was involved with some folks in organized crime and he did not want to have their attention. Told my mother, they wasn't married. My father sold drugs. My mother did drugs. Told my mother, do not put him on child support or anything like that. He's going, he's going, he was giving her money, taking care of this. He was, he was involved in my life. And my mother did something. She applied for something and she had to put down that, you know, the daddy is him and he's not there and so forth. And so she got these extra benefits. But what it did was, it's funny. I'll never forget this. I was three or four years old and it triggered something. The, the, um, the Marion County prosecutor you all may have heard of this name, Stephen Goldsmith, Goldsmith the Goldstein, Goldsmith, who ended up becoming the mayor of Indianapolis, but then also became part of George Bush's White House um, um, team on faith-based initiative. He was the head man on that. Well, he wanted to get my daddy. <laughs> he wanted to get my daddy on something. Uh, my daddy had all sorts of tax uh, bills. You just wonder, how is he not going to jail for that? What's, what's going on? Because he Because of who he was connected with. But that was one of those issues where 
uh, my father was upset because he didn't want to have his name put out by them. But she did so because the government uh, would not give her certain benefits. Some of you all know, would not give you certain benefits um, if the father is there. Now, what happens is during the civil rights movement, the fight was, thank you, Kirk Killen, uh, the fight was initially not to be able to go to white restaurants or white businesses only. It was just to be able to go there if we so choose. It was just to be have an equal treatment. Well, what did black folks do? What will black, I'm, I'm, I'm reading, I'm reading sharing this thing. I'll, what did black folks do? Once they were allowed to, once they were allowed to, they stopped frequenting in large and masses black owned businesses. Now this was a, a, a weird phenomenon. It's changed just now, but up until the early 2000s, so compare the, the, the 40 years after the civil rights movement and prior, we had more black millionaires, doctors and lawyers than we did at that point in time, excluding athletes and entertainers. Why? Because we had black businesses and, and they still black businesses. You know what black businesses um, pre-civil rights um, used that white businesses also used the same dollar. And so they had money and black folks who needed to buy goods and services would frequent them as well. Whites would sell there, would distribute them things to them as well because they needed money as well. And so black folks, unlike Jews, unlike uh, Hispanics, unlike Asians, unlike Native, unlike every other group, abandoned that particular group and started frequenting white businesses. Which is fine. Hey, we get to shop at, we get to shop at Woolworth. We get to shop over here. But Bob's... Um, store, he, his grocery store is going out of business. And so now what ends up happening is when you have other businesses that will move in, black businesses are being run down, people neglecting black folks not having the money, the income to deal with or, or to keep their communities where they used to be. And so you had more and more fathers um, not being in the household, a lot of different things that were happening. And what happens next? The community begins to digress and you start seeing an increase of crime and poverty but the reason why is because the more fathers leave the household, the more all these other things go up. If the father's not there, you are likely, more likely to have homosexual children, children that commit crime, that commit, uh, uh, that use drugs, that commit suicide, uh, likely to have other children out of wedlock. That's the legacy of not having a father there. Take a few more questions and we'll go ahead and mosey on skedaddle out of here. I saw something. Wait a second. Did I, did I click it? Wow. 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 And wow. Let me, let me, let me cover two things. First of all, he says prisons being profitable is the main reason. No, it's not. Most prisons, the overwhelming majority of prisons are not for profit and there are no for profit federal prisons. But let me just say this. Let me say this. Um, people don't go to prison because of for profit prisons. No, the overwhelming majority are in prison because they committed a crime. That part is understood. And the reason why blacks tend to have large, longer sentences is because of um, when you have the sentencing guidelines, you have uh, one guideline marker that determines how often you've committed crimes. And so let's say I am there for my first time and then Bob is there. This is his third time. We did the exact same thing. Well, Bob, who's a third time offender, is going to get sentenced at a higher at a higher rate, his guideline level, even if the state, but definitely feds are going to cause for him to have a higher minimum. Amen. So, so that's not that that's not true. You it's it's almost con. I love you, but it's almost like you just listen to what someone tells you and just go with that. You probably think that drugs in the black community because the white man is is, is flying them there. Because black folks, we don't have airplanes. We're not flying them into our community. Well, when was the last time you saw a plane fly into a black community with some dope? No, what happens is you find your connect, you get your connect, you get your, your, your dope, and you and you drive it in. So the drugs that are in the black community were literally driven in to the black community. The drugs that are in the Hispanic community were literally driven in by a Hispanic drug dealer. So uh, Obamacare turned out to be great resource, and Trump took his name. Obamacare was one of the single worst disasters that hit the American population as far as health care. People are less 
healthy now than they were prior to Obamacare, and you have higher premiums. It's not it's not disputable. It is a fact. There is no if ands buts about it. Yeah, but now I have coverage. Your coverage is horrible, and you have less options when it comes to dictating what type of coverage or who can cover you. The reasons why your premiums went up because this guy who have been eating chips and, and, and ho-hos and ding-dongs and so forth and smoking, he he is he, he can't be written by coverage. He, he's, he's, he's a walking ball of whatever, sickness and disease. But now you have to cover him. Well, if I got to underwrite him and he's going to die in the next year, but in the meantime, over the next five years, and he's going to all these treatments that's cost tens of thousands of dollars, who's going to cover it? He won't. He won't ever pay enough premiums to cover that. So who's going to pay for it? You will. What will Kamala do that Obama didn't do? Well, one thing she will do is Obama was not as as liberal as as she is. Um, Y'all, what she what she's advocating and spending is, is is pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Whoever wins, should we take comfort in Roman? We should take comfort no matter what, Jay. We're gonna take comfort no matter what. If November whatever comes and and Kamala wins, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be fine. You're going to be fine. If Trump wins, does that mean great day in America? Everything is going to be okay? No, it didn't mean that either. So, no, no. What'd you say? Um, I saw some, oh. I saw somebody said I was taking, okay. Yeah, you... <laughs> Now, there were some people that were able to get coverage that they otherwise would not have gotten because of Obamacare. But overall, it did far more harm to the majority of people than good. Now, some folks, it worked out well. But there were other ways to go about. There were other ways to fix that. There were other ways to take care of people who could not get coverage. There were far more other ways to do so. Far more other ways to do so. And we didn't. So anyway, uh, I'm going to take this and make it, it its own separate video questions about about politics, or whatever, and take it off the main video. So you all will see a second video. Now, the second video will not be on the smaller channel. It'll be on the main channel. For some of you guys, 300 folks that are over there on the smaller channel, um, we do have a, a larger channel <laughs> that is more devoted towards the teaching. The two channels are supposed to be different. Uh, the smaller channel where people will, hey, what about this person? What about that person? Have you seen this? Have you seen that person? Give commentary on that. That's what the that's what the smaller channel is for. The main channel will still do that over here as well, but you'll see more teaching, more of the the stuff that folks say, hey, hey you never talk about teaching, you never preach the gospel. Well, come over to the main channel. Um, <laughs> someone said the black channel and the red channel. The reason why they call the black channel, the black channel has the black logo, the small channel has the red logo. So. Anyway, um, I do like talking about this stuff. Uh, not a lot. Corey for president. And I could run for president. There was a guy in prison named Judd who ran for president. <laughs> he had $457,000 on his account that was donated. People literally donated money for him. Now, he could only use it for certain things. <laughs> but you are allowed to run for president as a, as a felon. You know why? You're allowed to run as a felon. Does anyone know why you're allowed to run for uh, for president as a felon? The reason why you're allowed to run is because in case you get to a point where your political enemy wants to imprison you, you can have recourse. Could you imagine if if that were the case in, let's say, South America, where Nelson Mandela could not have run because, hey, he's been in prison? No. Here in America, we understand that people aren't good. Our con Our framers understand that, and so therefore they didn't put any bounds on that. You could be imprisoned. That was not a that was not a sign. Now we 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 treat people that have been incarcerated as though that they are less than. I think that's going to change. I think it's going to change in some cases. For example, um, felons being able to get their gun rights back. I think I think within a year or two, um, all felons will be able. Well, not all, but non-violent will be able to have their gun rights back. Um, but a felon also can run for president. So. 
let me I, I have to I have to answer this. I have to answer these. Nis says Trump is racist. So can you do me a favor? And we, we're going to labor with you for a little bit. Nis said, am I saying Nis or Nis? Nis says Trump is racist and he's ignorant as all get out. Could you explain? He could be ignorant. I don't think he's racist. I don't think he's racist. I don't, I, I see no evidence of him being racist. Again, we didn't think he was racist before he ran as, as, as a, for, for a Republican president. But in what way is he ignorant? I would say this. I would say this. Um, he doesn't seem to be ignorant. He, he has handled himself um, or the country well. Things did go pretty well. And I don't, I don't think it was just, we were, you know, anyone could have handled it. The country run itself. No, I don't think so. I don't think that's the case at all. Do I think he's the greatest, the smartest? No. Trump is a criminal and he rapes women. There, He's never been convicted of rape before. He's been found um, civilly liable, but would he have been found civilly liable in another court? Maybe not. There's a reason why prosecutors bring up cases, try cases in certain places. There's a reason why he has those 34 counts um, conviction. All of you guys that call him a, a convicted felon, here's my question. Um, here's my question. Um, what was his charge? What was he convicted of? What was what was the felony? What was the federal statute that um, Trump violated? Did you just say con, con? Go away. You 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 are not. Listen, you're welcome here, but you're not. You are not welcome to talk. Then these comes back with you are all idiots. Doggone it! And I wanted to labor with you. We're we're having a nice conversation. So niece, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to ban you. Okay. Um, praise God. Do well with yourself. But. Go somewhere else. I had to ban you. That was not nice. You're all idiots. Wow. Wow. Uh, you got to be an adult. But then Khan says Kamala is not a liberal. You got to fix your definition of what a liberal is then, Khan. You, you, listen, some, something is wrong with you, brother. Love you, but are you saying he... <laughs> I believe Trump is a racist, but he is a button. I'm not sure what that means. But uh, he's, not a, he's not a racist. Um, he's harsh. He's brutal. But doggone it. What we call... I started to play. This is what I started to do. I started to play some video clips of former slaves and of blacks during Jim Crow and Reconstruction. I started to play some videos of them and listen to how they spoke and what they talked about. They seemed to be, okay, you say he'll be, okay. They seemed, not they seemed, they handled themselves far more better than we did. They not like us or we're not like them. Or they would say, y'all not like us. These are people that can literally go through slavery, go through Reconstruction, go through Jim Crow, and not blame anybody. Not be upset, not be angry. Build a family. Build a business. Be respectable, even if you got real, true racist folks that don't like you. Not like some of you people. They ain't like us. These are the people. These are the people. What is this? the teaching channel? Smart Christian. Just type in smart Christians. Uh, these are the people that didn't care what was done to them in the past. Some of them have actual whip marks on their back. Some of those folks were house servants. Some of those folks were in the field. Some of those folks, again, were being sped on. They couldn't look a white man in the eye, had to cross the street, and still had a family, did what they could, and still gave glory to God. Put us to shame. The first time somebody says something crossed us, he's racist. He's a homophobe. He's sexist. He's ageist. He's all these different things. We are, and let me just say this as we get ready to go. We are some of the weakest people that the world has ever met. And when I say we, I mean American Christians. We are some of the weakest Christians ever known. Let me show you. Let me give you an example. This guy, Cullen Bass, are you saying me? Are you calling me Uncle Ruckus? I happen to know who that is because some guys were showing me that. Are you saying me? I'm Uncle Ruckus. I'm a sellout. I'm just, I don't want to know. You're not going to get banned. Not going to yell at you. But me? 
that's who I am. Thank you, Big G, for the for the super chat. Thank you so much. But me, am I am I Uncle Ruckus? I I need to know. I need to know. This is your chance. I, I, and I, I could be wrong. I'm not sure who you're saying it to. No chance. I, 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 want, I want him. I, I, I need to talk to Cullen. That is, that is if he's going to respond. Now, because it's fine. Maybe Cullen doesn't know me. Maybe, maybe Cullen is not, is not, oh. Okay, okay. He wasn't talking. About, okay, okay. Okay, okay. But hold on, wait a second. I'm not sure. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. You saying we need Uncle Ruckus to tell the truth, so you still call me, are you calling me Uncle Ruckus? I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll let it go. It's my birthday. Happy birthday, Pruitt Young. Praise God. Oh, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I've got to do something. Someone did something. I've got to do something. He's not here. Doggone it. Y'all remind me to, to uh, say something for uh, Lucky Luciano. Uh, he left something. I, I did not see his super chat yesterday or the day before. And I, 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 I saw it later. So I'm sorry. I, I, I need to I need to make amends. But uh, happy birthday, though, Pruitt. How old are you? You look you look fairly young. You lost a lot of family. So like, isn't that sad? You lost a lot of family selection because of identity politics, because uh, question was why for her is because she's a black woman. Corey, some of your followers are going to fall, fall off. Pull. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you listen, you're right. Some of these folks, um, they love, they love Kamala more than they love Jesus. Some people do. Some of these folks love being black more than they love being saved. That's just a fact that that's why I say when I say they're not like us, not like us as far as black, but also they're not like us in terms of Christian. That goes to my point. Um, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, Colin. Okay, I, I get you. I get you. And let me say this and I'll end it here. We are the weakest of all the people I know of. Christians here in America, specifically Western Christians, but specifically Christians in America. It doesn't take much to, to hurt us, hurt our feelings. Not all of us, not all of us, but so many of us it doesn't take much at all. Easily offended. You can say something about their doctrine. <gasps> you can say something about their city. You can say something about their favorite politician. But say something about Jesus. That's the problem with us. You wonder why Washington, D.C. or Austin or Sacramento or Albany or Harrisburg or Indianapolis or Atlanta or Springfield why the people in these various state capitals don't respect Christians? Because we don't respect Christ. We don't respect Christians either. We don't respect what we stand for. And so that's the problem. If we were, and I know this passage does not apply to us, when in the Old Testament, if my people who are called by my name, well, if my people who are called by my name would act like they're called by my name, then everyone else would understand I'm not, no, 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 listen, I'm not saying you, I'm not saying you don't love Jesus. I don't mean, I'm not saying you. I'm saying a lot of Christians, this applies to a lot of Christians, a lot of so-called Christians. I'm not saying you. So I'm saying too many of us, we are by and large, we are the weakest. Not everybody. Some, some of you guys are strong, love the Lord, but a whole bunch aren't. And you all know I'm right. You all know I'm right. And so for that, that is our shame. Thank God that he has us over here in America rather than over in some of these other countries. Thank God. Many of you guys would fall off, not all, but some of you guys would fall off if you were put in places like, oh, I don't know, in Cuba, or if you were put in Russia, or if you were, heck, if you were, some of you guys, if you were in UK, you would succumb. Some of you guys, if you were in Canada, you would succumb. The easiest place to be a Christian is probably the United States of America but it won't always be. And so for that reason, I know Christians in heaven, if they can look down, I don't know if they can or cannot, but if they can look down and see us, they would shake their wow. They would probably look at Jesus. You sure they come up here with us? They're going to, they're going to take, the, they're going to taint the gene pool. <laughs> so, and, and all you have to do to be a good Christian is just put your confidence, your faith and your following in Jesus. 
That's why he says, why do you call me Lord and don't do what I say? You don't even have to be the best at following him. Just be trying. Don't let every shiny thing that comes by you squirrel and there you go after it. Kamala, Trump, Bush, Biden, Obama, whoever. All of these people, there's a good chance, there's a good chance that these folks are going to hell. There's a good chance. I'm not, I don't know. I don't know, but, but it, it looks like it. And we want to follow these folks and fight other Christians for it. Trump says some goofy stuff, some dumb stuff. I no no doubt about it. When he, when he said that, like some Trump stop, <laughs> stop. He is not a, Trump is not an orator. Yeah, we are we are spoiled Christians. Trump is not an orator at all. He is not a good orator. He, um, and so sometimes he says things like, "Wow, did you did you really say that?" So, um, but anyway, uh, guys, I love you so much. Um, I just say this because I'm not a prophet, but I'll leave you with this. As bad as you think it is now, it is about to get worse. You're going to be more persecuted than ever. Your views are no longer going to continue to be tolerated to the degree they are right now. You're going to have more and more people dislike you just because you follow Jesus. If you wear a shirt that says anything having to do with Christian Christianity, they are going to want to persecute you. That is, if you're the kind of Christian that's going to stand up. If you're the kind of Christian that will that will agree with everything the world does, amen. You're our kind of Christian. You are a safe space, all-inclusive, compromising Christian, then you're going to have it made in, on this planet. But if you stand for the word of the Lord, if you stand up for him, you are going to witness the persecution. It's going to get worse and worse and worse, irrespective of who the president is, be it um, Harris be it Trump again, or who the next person is. If I run for president and win, it's still going to get worse. I take that back. I take that back. It, it's going to be awesome if I win. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But no matter what, no matter who, it's not going to get any better. And so this is why you must be diligent. This is why he says, let your light shine. Ladies and gentlemen, let your light shine so that the world can see your good works, not your little funky mouth, not your writing, not your going to vote, not none of those things, that they can see your good works and then do what? Then they would in turn glorify God. Yeah, Mo, it's already happening. They would glorify God by seeing you, the love of the Lord in you. Amen.